Hi, I'm Bob Harris from BikeWorks in Greenvale, New York, BikeWorksLTD.com, and I'm going to give a uh, demonstration on removal and installation of an inner tube. Uh, we have a front wheel here from a road bike. Uh, this is a press the valve. The first thing we need to do is let the air out. Uh, to let the air out on a press the valve, you spin this knurled piece open and depress it, the air comes out. This one is already deflated because it has a puncture. So what we need to do is with the first tire lever we would insert it underneath the bead of the tire and hook it on the spoke. That frees up your hands so you can insert second tire lever a couple inches away and then run this tire lever along the edge freeing the one side of the tire. We're going to also remove this ring that's securing the press the valve so we can uh, remove it. The next step is to pull out the inner tube. Once that's done you can pretty much lift the tire off the rim like that. Everything is apart. We have the wheel, we have the punctured inner tube, and the tire. Uh, we're going to check the tire for sharp objects that might have caused the puncture. Sometimes they're still in the tire. You do not want to put a new inner tube in and uh, puncture a new inner tube because you failed to remove a piece of glass or a thorn from the tire. Uh, sometimes you can't find anything. You're also looking for slits or gashes in the sidewall. If there is a big gash in the tire, you want to uh, reinforce it with a boot. You could use a dollar bill or uh, some kind of a, a stiff, uh, flexible material. Uh, to prevent the tube from bulging out the slash in the tire and then you would run the tire at lower pressure to get home. This tire appears to be fine, uh, no problem here. We also, some, some flats are caused by a, a bad rim strip. The rim strip is inadequate if it doesn't cover all the spoke holes the uh, sharp edge of a spoke hole can cause a flat from the inside. Okay, Flats can also be caused by what I call an impact puncture or a snake bite where uh, you're running too low a tire pressure uh, and then you hit a bump and the tire compresses too much and causes a flat, pinches the tube and causes a flat. But uh, we're going to take a new tube out of a box and we can give it, we can open it up, make sure this moves up and down. If it doesn't move up and down, often on new tubes this is a little stuck, so you have to push it to break the seal. Once it's open, you can blow into it so it has a little bit of shape. After it has a good shape to it, you would put it inside the tire. Like this. And then line, line up the valve hole in the rim with the valve valve through, then you're going to pretty much do the opposite of what you did before. You're going to work one side of the tire on, keeping the tube inside the tire, always stuffing it in. So you have one side of the tire on, and then you're going to work the other side of the tire on.
Now, usually you get to a point here where it becomes difficult. What you want to make sure is that the tube is not pinched between the rim, the inside of the rim and the tire. You want the tube all the way up inside the tire so that if you look on either side, you cannot see it. Uh, I'm going to continue on with this, stuffing the tube inside. And a good thing to do at this point is to release, squeeze out a little bit of air, however you can, because you don't want to be fighting the air pressure. Once you do that, the tire rolls right onto the rim. You would inspect both sides all the way around. This side, I can still see the tube here, so I'm going to massage it like this until you cannot see the tube when you look on both sides. Back and forth, both sides, all the way around, checking. Once you're sure that the tube is inside the tire and not pinched, make sure the valve is pushed up into the tire and the tire is seated properly by the valve. Um, that's sometimes a, you get a bulge here because it's not seated properly. Spin the ring on to hold the valve in place. Make sure the valve is open. Now you need to inflate it. I'm going to use the pressurized CO2 and the microflate by Innovations to inflate it. First thing you do, screw the cartridge all the way into the applicator. That punctures it, it's sealed, it's ready to fill. The valve is open. We push this on securely and then back it off. We can, whoa, we can stop it by tightening it. Tightening and just check. Make sure it's seated evenly. We didn't miss anything. Then push it on again and let it fill all the way. Get cold to the touch, but that's done. Nice and hard, 100 PSI, and you're good to go.